STDs can be a nuisance at best and certainly deadly at worst. Hum human papillomavirus, also known as HPV, is very common and can lead to certain types of cancer. Local oncologist Dr. Scott Ackerman joins us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Jen. Good to see you. And we certainly want to warn our moms and dads who are watching with their kids that we're getting ready to have an adult conversation here. So let me start, Doc, if we could. Would you explain how does someone catch HPV? So HPV is a whole family of viruses. HPV stands for human papillomavirus. And the reason we call it that is because papilloma, these typically cause papillomas or warts. And there's about 200 different human papillomaviruses. And they, some of them don't do anything, some of them cause some warts, and some of them can actually be oncogenic and cause cancer. And they're usually transmitted through sexual contact. And once people have sexual contact with another person, uh, there's about a nine, about 90 some odd percent of Americans have had a human papillomavirus exposure. And I think it's important to point out, you and I have a, a good friend in common, Dr. Russ Smith, who, who specializes in this particular cancer, who has also shared with me before that this can be passed through kissing. So keep that in mind for our, our, our parents who are watching here with teenagers. But, but Doc, oftentimes there are no symptoms. And so this can go undiagnosed for years. How does that impact the infection rate then as a result? So you're right, patients don't have symptoms and they have the virus and it's sitting there lingering so they don't even know they have it. And so if you don't know you have something and then you kiss someone or have, se or have sex with someone, uh, then uh, you can transmit it unknowingly. So wh who is most likely to get HPV? Well, really anyone is likely to get it. Anyone who has any relationships or any contacts with other people. And so once people become sexually active, uh, that's when they have a potential to get the HPV virus. And what kind of cancers can it eventually lead to? So as I mentioned before, there's some HPV viruses that are non-oncogenic, and they lead to things like warts and those sort of things, or maybe nothing. But there's a, there's a few of them that are what we call oncogenic, and they lead to, later on in life, as those viruses linger in the body for years and years, they can lead to cervical cancer, which we have identified early on. But now we, find, we have found out that these can lead to other cancers as well, including anal cancers and penile cancers and cancers of the, of the oropharynx or the throat. I think that it's also important to note that, that there is a preventative here, right? There is a vaccine that is available, and there are some parents, however, who are hesitant to get it because it's offered by their child's pediatrician when they're as young as 11 or 12, and those parents frequently decline their child being vaccinated because they, for whatever reason, you know, think that this is somehow giving their kids a signal that it's okay for them to be sexually active. But the reality is this can protect them against, you know, HPV later in life or cancer. Right, absolutely. The vaccine's called Gardasil, Gardasil 9, I think is the latest one. And it, and it protects people from the seven most common oncogenic uh, variants of the HPV and, and two non-oncogenic ones that lead to warts. And we want people to get this. Americans, humans, to get this before they become sexually active, before they're, uh, so, so that's why we give it to kids. We have pediatricians do it in their office to nine to 12 year olds um, be before they have the chance to, but no, it doesn't give you free ride to have sex. It gives you a free ride in life to make sure you are, uh, you can pre you're preventing cancer. Dr. Scott Ackerman, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. such an important conversation to have, particularly as, as we are raising our children in this world. Thanks, Jen. Good seeing you.